So where are we, you ask this time? Where we are on the South Island of New Zealand, a little more than halfway down the island, closer to the West Hand Coast. You are in for a treat because today we're taking you to the Blue Pools and oh my goodness, how beautiful and blue they are. Our next stop, a little further up the Haas Pass was Fantail Falls. Our next stop was Thunder Creek Falls before we had to turn around and head back again. These three stops are an easy day trip from Wanaka. We are traveling up Highway 6 through the Host Pass in the Mount Aspiring National Park. Well, we started as most of our trips start. We get in the car, we have a basic plan of where we want to go. And then along the way, golly, we can't make it because we see something pretty. That something pretty was Lake Hawea. We saw a sign for the Lake Hawea lookout and that was more than two photographers could pass off. So we just pulled on over to see what was there. We followed a little trail up a little bit of a hill, the side of the road, and took gorgeous pictures. Fortunately for us, it was only about an hour drive from Wanaka to get to Blue Pools. The guidebooks recommend that you spend an hour at Blue Pools. Clearly, these guidebooks have no idea who we are because an hour was um, it, it, like a blink of the eye for us. How would we even begin to see this place in an hour? That's impossible. I mean, just hiking the trail one way took us an hour before we even got to Blue Pools. I think we spent an hour at Blue Pools. I mean, I, what? I, it's not our fault. And the problem was is that the trail just to get to the Blue Pools was so pretty. It wound through a beautiful beach and podocarp forest. There was the Makarora River going beside it. It was this stunning blue color. The trees were covered with moss. Along the trail, it wound through these green foliage with, it looked like somebody had planted ferns along the way. Who does that? That's so pretty. How can you walk? How can you put one foot in front of the other? I just don't get it. come to the first swing bridge. Guy and I loved the sign that told you that only 20 people could be on the bridge at one time. Because if you had 21 people, well, it looks like you fall into the water. Enough warning for me. There were only two people on the bridge in front of us, but um, I let them pass before we went across. After you pass the first swinging bridge, then you go on a boardwalk that skirts the edge of the Makarora River and takes you to where the Blue River comes down to the Makarora River and below it are the famed Blue Pools. The water was so clear and blue, it's clear that it's glacial water that has been gathered from the mountains that comes rushing down through this river. It was so clear that you could see the fish swimming around down in it. We were really lucky to be there between crowds. I understand that most of the time this bridge is swamped with people. We were able to get different perspectives from high looking down and down looking up. It was such a blessing and such a wonderful time. I, I just highly recommend Blue Pools. It was so clear that Guy felt like putting on his scuba diving gear and going scuba diving to look for caves that were probably not there. But that's beside the point, it was that pretty.
Some of my favorite shots are when we went back to the second swimming bridge and went down below it and shot back toward Blue Pools. So pretty. Next we went up the pass a little further to Fantail Falls. I love the sign that says two minute walk. Two minute? Who are they talking to? Are these like people who are marathon runners that are running out there and running back? They're clearly not talking about photographers. That's, that's just nuts, nuts, nuts. Fantail Falls is about 23 meters tall or 75 feet tall. It's across the river and unfortunately it had rained too much for us to be able to cross the river to get close up shots of Fantail Falls. It was really pretty from across the river. There is no drone footage allowed at Fantail Falls. So I used my Osmo Action on a very long extension pole to be able to duplicate that kind of footage. Our next stop was Thunder Creek Falls, which is 96 meters tall or 315 feet tall. It is an easy 10 minute walk out and back. 10 minutes for somebody other than us. That's just ridiculous. Anyway, that's what they say. Maybe you can do it. I, not us. Sometimes it's not the big landscape shots that stop us in our tracks. It's the little macro shots along the way that stop us. We just had to stop for these group of little red mushrooms innocently growing out the edge of a log. We're just too pretty to pass up. This kind of stuff happens to us all the time. It's all these things that we weren't expecting to see that just end up being one of the highlights. I like Thunder Creek Falls because to me it looked like somebody had a water hose at the top that shot the water all out of the top and then down the waterfall. It was really powerful and really pretty. Again, it was across the river, so we couldn't get to the base of the waterfall. There was a beautiful pond at the bottom of the waterfall, but from our side of the river, it was really hard to photograph that. Thunder Creek Falls was a quick hike um, relative to us, and um, really recommend this waterfall as well. Unfortunately, after Thunder Creek Falls, we needed to head back which was really tough because just a little bit further was the Roaring Billy Cascades. I guess we'll have to save that for another trip. As we drove in, we had passed the gates of Host, and I just could not pass it a second time without stopping. So on the way back, I made Guy, well, okay, we didn't really stop because you're not allowed to stop on the bridge, and the only good view of this is from the bridge. So we just drove full of really slowly across the bridge so that we could get some video footage of the gates of host this is a series of rapids that really could have been seen from a hike that goes along the bottom of the bridge but it was closed because the trail had been washed out i think new zealand is a great place to learn that in life you're really not in control because we had planned to go straight back to our place no stops we were on our way but then there was the neck of Lake Hawea. It was different in the afternoon light, and it was so pretty. We, 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 just, we just had to stop one more time, that's all. again. There was a place called Bottom Bay. I mean, maybe you can figure out why it's called Bottom Bay, but it was just, it was too good to pass up. These are the things you have to do when you're in New Zealand. You have to see the neck of Lake Hawaii and you have to see the bottom. That's all I'm saying. New Zealand is pretty everywhere, so it didn't matter that we weren't at some well-known place. We were just at a field, and the sun's going down, and a car passed through, 
on a dirt road and put up this dust. I just like, guy, we have to stop. And, and so let's let's just just take a just to take a couple of pictures. Well, we have a lot of those kind of discussions. I'm so glad we stopped here. It's a no-name place just north of Albert Town, and we got some gorgeous sunset pictures. Stop recording. Stop recording. Oh, stop it.